I'm going to do something today I've been wanting to do for a long time, but I kind of hadn't worked up the confidence to do it. And that is this IWC uh, automatic Cal 853. I purchased it 28th of June, 2020. So going on two years ago for 606 Swiss francs, which is 660 US dollars. And um, it it works fine, but it uh, the loom is uh, the loom is no longer luminous, and um, there, there it's also gotten a little bit loose. Like you can see, there's a loom dot right there, which is actually stuck on the. You can see it bounce around on the IWC. So it's, it's statically attached to the crystal right now. Um, but that came off one of these positions and then there's some hair in there. And the problem with this was I opened up the back, uh, did a bad job of that. I can fix that, but I opened up the back and the, the movement just does not come out the back because the, this is a very small case, which I like. It's very efficient for the Cal 853, but it uh, you have to go through the front to get the dial off or to pull it out. Basically, the dial is holding it. You can't pull it out the back. Um, so one thing. Before I do this, I just want to do, I, I always like to do this to remind people anytime you're working with a vintage watch, you should check it, make sure it's not radioactive. So I know this is not radioactive already because I've checked it before. But this is just a reminder. This is a Geiger counter that I bought on eBay or AliExpress for I think a hundred dollars. So if this was if this was radium, then the watch is radioactive, and you want to be careful of disassembling it because the dust that comes out can be uh, radioactive and and uh, not good for your health. I'll show you an example. This is this this dial is radioactive. Uh, and it may be the hands actually only, not the dial, because the dial looks like it's been cleaned up. Like the, the dots are, loom dots look like they're missing to me. Like they've been removed. But this is very radioactive. So when the Geiger counter does that, you want to be very careful about dust. So eventually I'm going to, I want to relume that one, but for now I'm doing this IWC. It's not radioactive and I'm just looking on the dial. It only says Swiss it doesn't say tritium, but it's probably, it probably was tritium. And you can see that loose loom inside there and some of the hair and stuff. One of my ideas for these these videos also is that because I'm not a watchmaker, it doesn't matter if I if I make a mistake, it could actually be useful to people who are also not watchmakers to find out what not to do the hard way with me. So In terms of uh, tools, there's nothing that could probably be better than a Bergeon crystal lift for doing this. It's possible that because this one is made for crystals that are also not round, it could be that a lot of that pressure I'm feeling is just compressing the, I'm compressing that rubber. It 
see how that um, I don't know how to get a view of that. Okay, there you can kind of see. There's rubber. There's like a large hard rubber ring around here. So all these things are pressing into that rubber. So the rubber just keeps compressing. More pressure is being exerted on the crystal, but most of it's going to the rubber. Oh, that's good. I heard, okay, so it's a little bit loose. So I'm almost there. It's able to rotate. Mm, those are like, oh. I see little shards. So that, that's what I was worried about. So that crystal is shot. And then the question is, if that crystal is destroyed coming out, then how would you put a new crystal in? But anyway, this is probably just a standard crystal, figure, figure out the size. Um, I can now do what I want to do. I wonder if I should just move these hands. so stupid. I know that this is a problem from, I've already learned this. If you pull up on a second hand under a piece of plastic and you're not, and you hold that plastic down, you end up bending your second hand. So that can be bent back, but eventually it will break. So it's just a second hand. So I'm going to try something different. <clears throat> I know there's a special tool for this. What? What? It just had... What? Okay, so the trick was... I never had to move, remove the fucking crystal. The, the trick was motherfucker
Okay, who cares? Calm down. The trick was what? Why? Why would that not come out before, but now it comes out? Okay, anyway, we can relume it. I've changed crystals before. I see how I can push this crystal ring out like that. And then take out the rest of the crystal scraps. So that's no problem. I, I, I think I actually even bought a crystal that, that I thought was the right size for the replacement crystal. The thing that sucks is I scratched the dial a little bit, but the truth is this watch is, um, yeah, it looks terrible. That was like the worst. Just looking at that it just looks terrible. Um, what was I saying? The truth is, I want to look at that and see if it's possible to fix that. What a fragile dial. Can't even hand in, handle exploding crystal. Okay. You know what? It's going to look great at night not going to look so great. I mean, because of the loom, it's not going to look so great during the day because of that freaking scratch. Um, okay. So we need to look at the old loom and make sure it's all scraped off. And to do that, I can remove the movement. That's kind of beautiful. Um, oops. So I'm trying to see if there's any There's one I should use wood for this I did this, uh, I did do a uh, crystal replacement on the Omega Seamaster and I scratched the dial also. And then the end, I don't care. I do, but. Okay, so. The hands to, to, to clean them, the easiest thing to do is first just knock the loom off. So I can put the dial over here, put the hand here, flip it, make sure it's flipped upside down. That's a nice hand. Make sure it's in focus. <clears throat> I 
Interestingly, that loom, oftentimes on the back of a hand like this, you'll find the loom is kind of messy. And this is not messy. But it likely will be messy after I reloom it. I think I'm starting to like the fact that everything I do is a disaster. Oh, I know what I could do. This is kind of interesting. So I scratched this case back with the opening tool, right? So the thing to do, this is 600 grit sandpaper. The thing to do is just sand it, polish it. I'm going to do that before I clean it. Let me show you how bad that is because I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure it's entirely me. Like this watch has been around for 60 years. So the only problem is how can I get that to focus? Um, <clears throat> so if we look at this, This is kind of the, the worst of it, I think. Okay, see these gouges? Um, and then the scratch there. Gouges, scratch. The least superficial is this one right there. But for the most part, they're superficial. There's another one there. So they can be polished out, but first it helps to kind of sand out the... Because when you have a, a gouge like that, it's pushing in and out. And so, sand off the out part. Imagine if I was like a watch repair guy who was like showing you how I repair watches and then selling them. I would have to like make a disclaimer when I sold them. I'd be like, I promise you I did not touch this watch because anybody would be like, wait, any watch that this guy touched, I do not want it. That's also why like the real watchmaker, they have to, they have to kind of impress you with how good they are because they want your service or they want to sell you a watch. So if they look, if they let them, if they make videos where they look like an idiot, like me, they're, 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 they're undermining their own business. So then you watch their videos and it's like, you never see them make a mistake or maybe you do, but I haven't noticed it. And the reason I thought of that, somebody is like, somebody would watch this and be like, this dude is like sandpapering the back of an IWC. What the hell is wrong with him? And then there's the whole watch aficionado thing of like, 
The scratch is a part of the charm. You never polish a watch. It's like... It's not that charming. It's like somebody really loved that watch. They, they scratched the hell out of it with a Swiss Army knife. No, they didn't love it. They were idiots. So I want to make a point about sanding. Again, which is, if you don't sand it first, if you just polish it, you just polish the scratches. And the, and the polish, because it's kind of like evenly applied, it just polishes the inside of the scratch, the outside of the scratch. So you have, in the end, you have a polished scratch. Whereas if you sand it, you get rid of the scratch. And then you polish out the sanding marks. And then, granted, the case is a little bit softer, the curves are a little bit softer, particularly if, you're do if you've got a hard edge and that's where your dents are. But you've gotten rid of the scratch. L literally, it's gone. Like, it's not... There's no remnant of it. And to me, that looks better than having scratches. The, the polishing part I'm not going to do on camera because it's, it's in the back and it's a Dremel tool with metal polish wheel, but I think everybody knows how that works. There's another problem with, with, with polishing, which I think... Some stainless steel cases, I could be wrong, but I think some stainless steel cases were rhodium plated, even though they were stainless steel. And the only reason I can think that they would have done that is because in the shop, when stainless steel wasn't really appreciated the way it is today, in the shop, if you rhodium plated, plated stainless steel, it probably looked even shinier and more attractive like as a, as a customer was looking at a watch in a watch case. So the problem is if it's, if it was rhodium plated, then when you polish it, eventually you're going to remove that rhodium plate, which is fine, but it's, um, you're going to want to do that to the whole watch or else it's not going to look, it's not going to have the same finish overall when you're done. And then, I guess if that's even true, which I don't know if it's true, then the question would be, is there a way to chemically remove rhodium plating so you can kind of get down to the stainless steel without having to polish every square millimeter of the surface of the rhodium plated case? So this case back has a lot of nicks and scratches from people opening it. I also, I hate snapback cases because of this. A lot of old watches, you see them and they're just, they're so scratched up, like this one. And if it, if it had just had like a different, like a screw back and, the, and a decent way of grabbing the screws, screw back with a wrench or whatever, then you don't have all this damage from slipping it's almost impossible not to slip occasionally when you're using a lot of force one slip and you have an ugly case back scratch okay so i've decided to do the um the ultrasonic cleaning on camera because I figure if anybody's watching this voluntarily and they're not like being held captive and tortured by being forced to watch it, then they might be interested in what I actually do. So this is the, this is the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, and, oh, but before that, I, I, so I did polish, I finished polishing. Uh, we'll see how it looks when it's, after it's cleaned. I didn't do anything to this, uh, this part. I think I still see hairline scratches around the sandpaper scratches there, but um, that could be polished out more. But the, um, oh, so, so to polish it, I used this green polishing 
uh, wax or whatever it's called and a Dremel tool uh, with a cotton brush or whatever on the end. And then after that, I use this Cape Cod stuff to polish kind of, it's kind of got some solvent in it. So it, it polishes it a bit more and it also removes the wax. And then, so that, that's how it got to this point. And then for the ultrasonic cleaner, I'm using household soap detergent, dish detergent, and, um, and warm water. And that's because I'm cheap and the ultrasonic cleaning liquids are like in Switzerland anyway, it's like 100, 120 francs for a rinse and a wash. And this is, uh, I'm going to wash it or rinse it with this distilled water. So um, this has two different settings. So for things like this that are not, not um, I use the 50 watt for, for, for steel things that are, I don't think are fragile. And then I'm also going to put in here, I'm worried about picking up the hands with, I moved all that stuff over here. So I'm going to pick up the hands like this with Radico because tweezers can end up losing track of them. Um, I'm going to clean this thing. Could clean this also. So then I think you just start it by hitting, I don't remember actually, that got it to that number. Okay, so the I'm gonna do the um, I'm gonna pause the video and rinse it with the distilled water without being on camera because I, I think that's a waste of time. Not that most of this whole process is not a waste of time. So this is Super Luminova. From Tritech in in Switzerland, X one GL C one and C one is white actually, and then the emission is green, so that's why the green square. But there's I have two that have the C five which is green green, and C one which is white green, and by white green what that means is that the powder looks white, and it look it cures white but it glows green. This face has, dial has dots that are freestanding. So they need to have, it needs to be, it's going to be really hard to do it, actually give them the right size. But it's going to help if this loom is, is thick enough that it balls up and doesn't run anywhere. I think that's going to be pretty good. Um, so for the hands, I'll suspend them between
So I really don't want to scratch these hands. They're really nice on top compared to the hands on this watch that I screwed around with so much. The bottom side, which is what you're going to, which is going to be paint pointed up, it's not so nice, but it doesn't need to be. So we'll, pop, we'll use the wood. I never really stuck those down at all. It helps if they are stuck down a little bit. I think that's pretty good, but if it's not, I'll, it'll be a do-over. So I'll set this under here to dry and then <clears throat> get into the hard part. So again, I'm going to use wood, but I'm going to break this. That didn't work. Yeah, so I like to break it and then get a kind of splinter effect to use as a brush. Where's a good place to start? How about three o'clock since I'm here? That seems great. I think this is going to work great. If I make a mistake, I just wipe it off.
Okay, so now the next thing would be to maybe look at it glowing. Okay, I'm happy with that except for 11 o'clock. Now that should be easy to fix. 11 o'clock, it just needs to be pushed back a little bit. Okay, I'm going to say that's good. I'm not even going to look at it again. Now the next problem is trying to get the crystal in here without breaking it. So maybe that, let's see. Okay, so somehow that's in there, which is a very lucky thing. <clears throat> Thank God there's no date mechanism on this. That makes the hands a lot easier. First, we look at the hands together. So the bottom looks gnarly, which is normal. But the top, oh, the top, the top on this minute hand looks a little bit gnarly too. <sighs> so the problem is, it's it was too thick the the loom was too thick so it kind of pressed through and just kind of made its own shape and that's not good now the the, the our hand somehow looks fine with the minute hand i could just use it as is um because I need to put the thing back together again, and then I can redo it someday. Because I'm not going to redo it now. And I'm going to have to do some work later anyway. Meaning, I'm going to have to replace that crystal.
This is strangling my fingers. <clears throat> I should use a crystal press and a movement holder for this. Instead, I'm just going to use the movement holder. Sorry, a hand press. Um, I think for this to work, I have to focus at the extreme. This is like not what you want to be doing. Do not want to be using tweezers over that logo. Should just be using Rodico for this. Oh, so annoying. Mm -mm. Hand just disappeared because I was careless. Jesus. Okay, should be able to press that on. Put this. Okay, so now I can try to fix my damaged seconds hand. And then I can try to place it and see if it has clearance over the Pasta sticking out of the top of the sec Minahan. Jesus. Okay, that works. Now the whole problem is though, reassembling it as a non-waterproof watch is not a great thing.
Oh, how frustrating. Okay, so the second hand got stuck in the back because of its bend. Now it'll probably clear. Now if I dump the movement in the case I can try to figure out what's happening with this ring. I think the ring probably has to go. Oh, I can kind of see. I think the ring does go like this, strangely. And the second hand is having a problem again. Crossing the pasta patch. Damn it. So we can look at what's happening there as several possible solutions. One again is to bend this. That should be okay. I've kind of lost my mind here, not doing a good job of talking.
Holy crap, I'm so tired of this. Okay, now I could use... No, I need a screw, right? Now I need a yellow screwdriver. Okay, amazing. Now, The final thing is try to figure out, does the seal make sense now? I think it might work better, but it's going to be hard to test it. I guess I'll have to test it another time. So then I'm going to close this, even though I, I really hate this. I'm going to close it the way I did before. problem which is the crown is not tight for some reason so I can only set it forward but that's okay for now I'm gonna to go to 10 till 12 11 49 actually okay <clears throat> So, I just want to finish this up at this point. <sighs> Desktop's still a little bit of a mess. So, I damaged the dial with the exploding crystal. Let's see how the loom looks. Loom looks great. And like I was saying, if this is a beater, the dial damage, I, 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 I can't really do anything about the dial damage. I didn't know what was going on. I made a mistake. That's that. But I now have a watch that is immensely readable at night. And that's what I wanted. And I'm going to fix some of the mistakes I made. The other thing is the dial is actually 
replaceable, of course, if I can find one, because it's a little bit yellowed. So if I could find a new dial, that would be better also for the loom because I wouldn't have hand painted loom on it. But I'm happy with this. If I didn't damage anything else, if it keeps time. Here, wait, let's see if I do this. That's crazy. I love it. 